I'm going to mention something about the grips. I'm going to use several grips throughout these videos. Depending on the style of music you're playing and depending on your own capabilities, you're going to use different grips. But let me first start by saying you should feel as natural as you can, regardless of what grip you have. And you want to use as little tension as possible. The less tension, the more endurance, the more power you're going to have and the more control. So whatever grip you use, start by dropping your arms to your side and picking them up from the elbows so that your arms are nice and relaxed. If you lift your shoulders or your arm, that creates tension and you don't want tension in your chest or your shoulders. So regardless if it's match grip, traditional grip, French grip, you should be nice and relaxed in the shoulders. Quickly, I will explain the strokes I'll be using in order to execute these rudiments. This is what I call the real rudiments. Each of these strokes are defined by what follows them. The rebound stroke is a note followed by another note of the same volume. So the rebound stroke is most common with the, you've heard the exercise eight on a hand. So if you're just playing eight on a hand, those are rebound strokes. This is a very simple stroke. Just let the stick do all the work and let the hand follow it back up. Okay, they can be various volumes. Like I said, they can be softer and it doesn't have to be a straight eighth note rhythm. Those are all rebound strokes. All rebound strokes. Very easy, very simple. The controlled stroke is an accent followed by a tap or lesser volume stroke. So the controlled stroke could be an accent. When I stop the stick here, I'm in position to play a softer note. So if I play like accented triplets, the left hand. That first stroke is a controlled stroke, and I want to stop it right above the drum, the pad, so I'm in position to play a soft note. The tap basically is a softer rebound stroke. We also refer to taps as inner beats or ghost notes. If you're a drum set player, they like to use the term ghost notes. I know drum corps guys use inner beats, whatever. It's the softer notes underneath and they can be consistent. These are also re can be called rebound strokes, but, but they're at the low end. As I'm playing uh, an ax a controlled stroke, and then several taps. Finally, there's the upstroke. This is a soft note followed by a loud note. This is also called the molar stroke. In the book, the molar book, the author Sanford Moeller illustrates the upstroke using frame by frame film strips. He described it so well that they named the stroke after him. However, he also explains later that he exaggerated the motions for the purpose of the illustrations. So the, the illustration, his motion is way up here. So the molar stroke can be a very subtle motion. It just means to lead with the wrist. I call this common sense stroke. So I'm going to lead with the wrist. I like to use, a, if you have a watch on or a live strong band, you're going, to, you're going to pull up as you play a soft tap and then accent. So this is a molar stroke. I say common sense stroke because it's going to give you a lot of speed. If you do it right, work on it slow. So if I play a controlled stroke and then an upstroke or a molar stroke. Here's an exercise that consists of all four strokes. Rebound stroke, controlled stroke, tap, and upstroke.
Work on those strokes and you're going to have more speed, more power, and more endurance and play all the rudiments correctly. As we go through all these videos, we're going to be mentioning those strokes. All of the rudiments, except for the multiple bounce roll, consist of those strokes. And that's it. Thank you.